This is what a former football player from Valparaíso said during the games between Chile and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics in 1973, short after Augusto Pinochet's coup d'etat against Salvador Allende. On September 11 from that year, a turbulent era in the history of the Andean country started. The socialist ideas that Allende had imposed since his election in 1970 were not liked by the Chilean right, which decided to bomb the currency house to start the uprising. That morning, Allende would die, his government would fall, and the period of the military council, which would last for almost 17 years, would start. As violent as Chile seemed, the world would continue, and with it, the previous of the FIFA World Cup, Germany 74. Chile did not intend to be left out. Its next match would be on September 26th. It would encounter the Soviet team in the first leg in Moscow. They leave a moment so complicated that not even the usual joy of football would distract them. Those years would be marked by the military board, who aimed to erase all signs of agenda socialist government. Supported by his political party, Popular Union, Agenda had become the only socialist leader to get to power through a democratic path in 1970. He had nationalized private enterprises, deepened the agrary reform, and increased the free public education. His policies had generated social discontent, and this was visible due to increasing inflation, high unemployment, and inflated wages. The Andes were also unsatisfied by the presence of militaries in governmental trust positions. Pinochet, for example, was Minister of the Interior. With Pinochet, between 1973 and 1990, Chile would leave a dictatorship that would be recognized as a military regime. There were hostile times based on reprimands and oppressive controls. In the almost 17 years of Pinochetism, the dictatorship would leave more than 44,000 victims, 33,000 detainees and tortured, and over 200,000 exiles. The right of strike was annulled, collective dismissals were made, the parliament was dissolved, all the wing popular organizations and political parties were dismantled, and among the state of siege, a curfew was established. Also, a neoliberal economic model similar to the one of the United States was followed. It proposed a private sector of protagonism, allowing the privatization of basic services, as well as a custom tariffs and importations reduction. This would end up intensifying the social inequality. The military severity was a main characteristic of political repression. It was such that by September 22nd, only 11 days after the uprising, there were already thousands of detainees, including many in Santiago's national stadium, mixing, inevitably, the football world and the Chilean crisis. The detention and torture camp for political prisoners established in the national stadium was just one of many in the country. Its impact and fame resulted, partially, from the effects it had on the Germany's World Cup of 74. The stadium became one of the symbols of the civic military dictatorship, even though it was used as a detainee center only from September 11 to November 9th. It was the biggest prison any South American dictatorship has seen, coming to house as calculated between 15 and 20,000 people. The prisoners were located in the bleachers. The velodrome sectors were used as an interrogation and torture area. In the stadium, there were women and men, nationals and foreigners. There were also children. The occupation of the stadium was just one of the reasons why the directives of the Soviet Union didn't want to play in Chile. Tensions were obvious since the Andean team traveled to Moscow for the first game. The players were afraid of leaving their families in the middle of the new regime's blow-up, since most of them were supporters of the outgoing government. Internally, to leave a convulsed country like this one wasn't easy. For all of us who were young, newlyweds, with wives, we thought about our relatives. And with all that was being spoken about what happened to the left people, people who thought different. Against the lots, the duel ended with a scoreless draw. For the second leg, the FIFA had given a free pass, in spite of the discontent of the Soviet Union that rejected the Pinochetist regime. The FIFA stated to have seemed total calm after visiting Santiago. The Soviet team refused to attend the game, but it was ordered that the game took place anyway. Chile jumped into the field and touched the ball onto the rival area, where the captain Francisco Valdez scored a qualification goal, without a rival that could prevent it. This game was seen as a theater of the absurd, it was named the Ghost Match. They would get to the 1974 World Cup with happiness for participating in the German Championship, but disappointed on how they have achieved it they would get eliminated in the first phase of the tournament. Not only the history of football had been marked, but also the stadiums. 
On the third anniversary of the historic coup d'etat, September 11, 2003, a part of the stadium was declared a national monument. In 2018, the hatch of the national stadium was open to the public. From this hatch, prisoners could see their relatives who waited for news from outside the stadium. This area is still a constant reminder of the inmates that were there, of the Pinochet's repression and of the spills this had over football. No matter how much we try to separate a country's situation in layout, it's still all a mixture. The elements are not lying one next to each other, but crisscrossed. Each one spills part of itself over the other, for better and for worse. Observing the case of the Ghost Match and in general the participation of Chile in Germany 74, we can confirm a historical maxim. History teaches. Even though Chile has finished its dictatorship, the reminders are still present. They experienced it, for example, with last year's protest and even on what would seem mundane, like visits to the stadium to enjoy a football match. Not to forget and to highlight how related each aspect of life is, is not just some political analysis, but allow us to visualize how important it is to keep past alive and its context in order to understand the present and its consequences. Any event is explained as a whole. This includes and is highlighted in the most political sport.